Hey guys, welcome to the histology of the skin. In this video I'll be showing you microscopic photos that I've taken and I'll show you first how to orient yourself showing you what landmarks to, to look for when you first put a skin slide on the microscope and then I'll show you the general layers of the skin, the sub layers of each of those general layers of the skin show you where the hypodermis is, show you the t tips and tricks to look for, and also some of the other structures of the skin, for example, hair and your oil glands, your sweat glands, and how to know how to differentiate one from the other. All right, let's jump right in. So the first thing you want to do when, you, when you're looking into a microscope, looking at a skin slide, is, is asking yourself, well, where is, what sort of landmark can we use to be able to figure out to be able to orient ourselves. The first thing we want to do is, is, is orient, orientation. Well, the dermal papilla, you see this, this line right here. These little fingers, if you will, these little fingers that kind of go up and down, up and down, these little fingers, this is, these are dermal papilla. This is the dermis, all this light pink down here is the dermis, and everything above all this colored stuff all the way to the top is the epidermis. And so this line here is the dermal papilla, the dermal papilla. A lot of times it'll be kind of straight like that or it might be even wavier like you see here. Here's again that all that light pink and then very, very, very colorful. And so here are your dermal papilla, meaning dermis, derma, derm, dermal fingers, dermal papilla. And so the dermal papilla separates the epidermis from everything below which is the dermis. So that's the first thing you wanna you want to um, use for orientation. Okay, so what are the two general layers of the skin? The two general layers, the two main layers are the epidermis and the dermis. What's below the skin is hypodermis and that is dominated by by adipose tissue. So if you look here, just this little part here is the epidermis. All the rest of this is the dermis and then suddenly we see those adipocytes. All those all that adipose tissue. So this is the the subcutaneous that you see under the skin. If we take another look here, uh, here you can see it again. You have the epidermis and then all this down to here is the dermis and then the hypodermis dominated by adipose tissue. So this is, these are the, the kind of things you want to do when you're um, trying to just looking through the microscope for the first time trying to figure, trying to just orient yourself. Where am I in the slide? Where am I? Because there's a lot of layers, there's a lot of waves. Um, so that's kind of what you want to do. Okay, so there are four layers of epidermis when we're looking at thin skin. There are four layers, four specific layers of the epidermis when you're looking at thin skin. Those four layers, starting from the most outermost, most superficial, is your stratum corneum. That's this clear, translucent, I mean, you can see right through this. This is stratum corneum, stratum corneum. And so it, is, it seems like it goes light, and then it goes dark, light, dark. And that's pretty much what happens every time. That's pretty much what it looks like under any microscope. Dark, uh, you have this light here, and then you have dark, light, dark. That's with thin skin. With a thin skin, your, ep your stratum corneum is very, very clear. So stratum corneum, and then you have stratum granulosum, is this first dark layer here, and then, and that's, this is like, you know, three or four layers of cells, and then you have this eight to ten layers here, this is your stratum spinosum, stratum spinosum, and then finally you have one single layer, like a soldier course of cells, and this is your stratum basal. All of these four layers belong to the epidermis, epidermis. So what are the two general layers of the skin? Epidermis and dermis. What are the four layers of just the epidermis in thin skin? 
stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basal. Now, well, we I keep talking about thin skin and thick skin. Well, what does thick skin look like? Well, in thick skin, found in your palms and the soles of your feet, the stratum corneum, first of all, is very, very, is, 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 is a dark pink, just like you'd see here, but also considerably many, many, many more cells. Let's take a look. This next one, this is, this is an example. Look at this thick skin and look at the stratum corneum. From this point here all the way up to the top here, that's a lot more cells. Then that's what you would expect in, the, in your, the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. This is now, this is not clear, is it? This is not as clear as, you, as we saw here. Yet both are stratum corneum. In the in the in thick skin, however, you have five layers of epidermis. Let's go through them. You have. Let, let's start from the let's start from the basal. So you have stratum basal, and these aren't as you don't see these as as dark. Remember, we had that dark light dark. Here you don't see that, but um. But but anyway. You can just see, you can just try to just imagine a li slightly darker single soldier course of cells called the stratum basal. All the rest of this from here all the way up to where it starts to get kind of grainy again, this is your stratum spinosum. Stratum basal, stratum spinosum, and now here's your, those three to four layers of cells, this is your stratum granulosum. These guys are starting to make your keratin stratum stratum granulosum now there is a fifth layer if if this is your stratum granulosum and this is your stratum your stratum corneum this layer in between this is your clear layer the only found in thick skin this is your stratum lucidum stratum lucidum stratum basal stratum spinosum stratum granulosum stratum lucidum and then finally your stratum corneum those are the five layers of the epidermis in thick skin in thin skin you're going to have that missing stratum lucidum all right now what about the dermis well the dermis has just like um uh, j just like the epidermis has multiple layers, the dermis also has a couple of layers. The top one-fifth of the dermis is called your papillary layer. And the bottom four-fifths of the dermis is called the reticular layer. If I click forward here, and this is true for thin and thick skin, if I click forward and kind of try to find a, 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 where it's real obvious, aha! Look at this. We have here's your dermal papilla, right here. That means everything up here is the epidermis. You can see how here this is the papillary layer. The papillary layer of the skin is dominated by areolar connective tissue. That's why up here looks totally different from this point all the way down to here. All this layer of the dermis, this sublayer, is called your reticular layer and the reticular layer is dominated by dense irregular connective tissue dense irregular you see the collagen fibers going in every direction so it's irregular all right let's do it one more time the dermis from here down to here from the bottom of your epidermis to the top of the hypodermis hypodermal layer is your dermis Dermis has two sublayers, papillary layer dominated by areolar connective tissue, which is the top one fifth, and then the bottom four fifths of the dermis is the second la second sublayer called the reticular layer, and that is dominated by dense irregular connective tissue, and if we we kind of go here, you, you, you see, we, we see here, papillary layer, it's layered, l labeled here for you, papillary layer and reticular layer. <clears throat> okay, so now we've just covered, just in those few minutes, we've covered all layers of thin and thick skin. 
if if we're if I'm asking you, what are the, all the sub-layers, what are all the possible layers of thick skin, how many can we get up to? Well, it's five plus another two. That's seven. So you can, get up to, you can have up to seven in thick skin. In thin skin, you can have up to six because you would have four in the epidermis and then two in the dermis. What about the hypodermis? Well, the hypodermis is we don't consider part of the skin. So it's, it is hypodermis, subcutaneous fat, adipose tissue, but it doesn't belong to the integument. What other structures do we find in the skin? <clears throat> we have hairs. We got hair follicles. And these hair follicles could be, depending on how they're, you know, how they're cut, you might not see them going all the way up and in, in, in out. Uh, so it just sort of depends on the on the on the cut of the tissue slide. So let's take a look. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look here at uh, one hair follicle, and I'm just trying to find a, a nice one here for you. Um, here we find the hair. The, the bulb would be the very end. This whole thing we would say, this is the hair follicle. Hair follicle. The very end is the hair bulb. And anything that is below the skin, we call the hair root. So from here, this point to this point, this is the hair root. The very end is the bulb, the hair bulb. And then all this on the outside, this, this is the hair follicle. Um, <clears throat> here we have it again. Oh, here's actually labeled. It's a little bit more clear here. Hair bulb. As long as it's below the skin, we call it the hair root. If it's, if it's outside, out in the air, outside of the skin, that's, that's what we call um, the hair shaft. Hair shaft, hair root, hair bulb. And then all the outside there would be the hair follicle. What else do we find? We, we also find three kinds of glands. We have two kinds of sweat glands and one kind of oil gland. The oil gland is called sebaceous gland. It secretes oil. And sebaceous glands are always attached to the hair follicle Therefore, wherever you find sebaceous, you'll, you'll find a hair follicle nearby. You notice that these guys are, they're filled in. The cells themselves are, are, are filled in and they're pink. As I go through these slides, we're going to find sebaceous glands always next to the hair follicle. These are sebaceous glands. The, the sebum goes up along the side of the hair root, side of the hair shaft, and, and out. It doesn't, it doesn't actually flow inside of the hair itself, but just along the side. Um, I'm going to click through here, and I want to see if you can, in this slide, can you identify where a sebaceous gland would be? One, two, three... These are all sebaceous glands. Here, here's a hair follicle here. Right next to it, it's, it's, they're filled in. Sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland. You see that? All right, now there's two, there are two kinds of sweat glands. One, and these, both of these sweat glands are, they do look fair, they're, they're tubes, and they do, um, as far as structure, they do do look the same. One is the tube is considerably larger than the other. So I'm going to show you a slide here to show you uh, a, to have a, a good comparison. Look at the size of this tube. This is a cross section now going you know cut perpendicular to the tube, to the gland, and look at the size of this. Lot much 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 larger than what you'd see here. The larger one also is attached to the hair follicle, so you'll always have this. I mean, 
don't don't uh, don't get thrown off if you don't see hair follicle but in real life they are actually I mean the slide might not be cut that way but you will also find apocrine always attached to hair follicles so in here it is obvious that these two are close this is your apocrine apocrine sweat gland that's how you'd say it apocrine sweat gland these are the smelly ones these are the ones found in the groin anus uh, axillary uh, your, your armpits and then you have smaller tubes a smaller set of tubes and these are your eccrine sweat glands eccrine sweat glands these are found all over the body here you can see like okay well what do we got here apocrine what do we got here apocrine what do we got here apocrine what do we have here these are eccrine this is an eccrine sweat gland this is probably all one gland eccrine you know it's a tube that's that's convoluted it's going left right it's all twisted up and so so you're seeing a cross section of it but you can imagine these to this tube coming in into the screen out of the screen what do we have here what kind of gland this is eccrine sweat gland eccrine sweat gland so here we have on just in this one slide we have all three kinds of glands very nice here's another slide you can kind of guess you got you have apocrine see here we don't necessarily see a, a, a hair but this is for sure apocrine apocrine and these smaller ones are eccrine um, now there are, there's also Meissner's corpuscle and this could be Meissner's they, they sort of they, they sit in the dermal papilla they sit in the, the the dermal papilla of the papillary layer right right up in these little fingers this one right here could be one um, I'm gonna try to find it is it is it is harder to find in skin but uh, this could be one right here Meissner's corpuscle Meissner's and but you'll 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 definitely um, if they're gonna be somewhere they're gonna be um, right in the dermis right right at the very top of the dermis in these little fingers here you'll find the Meissner's corpuscle towards the bottom all throughout the bottom of the dermis you'll find um, the the Piscinian corpuscle uh, the one that looks like an onion and uh, I don't have any 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 slides of those but that's another um, another structure that you'll want to that you'll that's that you'll uh, want to be familiar with um, definitely on the model on the skin models you'll you'll want to um, you'll want to have that down I, I, I can show you here I do have a, another video f another video for you already of, of, of the skin so I won't go through this in detail but here is your Piscinian corpuscle that looks like an onion and then your Meissner's are there they are they're kind of sticking up and so you see it here sticking up in the um, up in the dermal papilla there so so just to review a few things that we covered where where are we how do we orient ourselves well you start with the the dermal papilla right here everything above the dermal papilla is epidermis and everything below well, I mean not everything but down to the hypodermal layer it would be dermis where you see adipose tissue very clear that would be the hypodermis where you have your subcutaneous fat and the skin and the dermis has two sublayers your papillary layer made up of areolar tissue and your reticular layer made up of dense irregular you see all this collagen down here and uh, here see how, how I've zoomed in here you can see how it's a little bit more obvious with the two layers of the dermis and then here we are in the epidermis you have your stratum basal stratum spinosum stratum granulosum and finally your stratum corneum all right thank you guys very much and uh study well